Hello and welcome to another Outlet Online Worship Experience. Uh, we're Vince and Ashley Thomas, lead pastors of the Outlet Community Church, and we are into the month of July. That Already, we're now I feel like this, our this. summer has flown by. And it's just like sports. This is the second half of the year, so make the second half your best the half. The best half. And Amen. God has been gracious to us, to our ministry. Um, this entire month, Ashley and I want to come before you every single week. So every mm -hmm. single week we're going to be live and really just changing some things up to share from our heart and to prepare us to be fully hybrid as a ministry where we're offering both online and in-person mm -hmm. gatherings beginning Sunday, August 1st. We Sunday, are August officially 1st. back. We're officially. It feels good to say. Listen, <laughs> that, that feels amazing. Um, but, you know, throughout our time this year and throughout the, the past couple of months, Ashley and I have kind of weathered some storms and just yeah. have experienced some things, some heartaches, as well as some joy That's right. that uh, we had to personally take some time and just to, you know, kind of seek the face of the Lord. Amen. And, yeah, yeah. Um, Pray, get you, wisdom, you know, get healing, <laughs> get healing. Um, yeah. And just from that time of reflection, the series that we're going to be sharing was birth and it's going to take us about four weeks to get through this but i believe that from what we've kind of had to learn while leading um that these are going to be elements that are going to help you in your life when things happen and so the title of this series is i didn't see that coming we're talking about the good the bad and the in between i didn't see that coming and um Quite honestly, we, uh, we, we'll just go ahead and share our personal testimony. So while we're leading uh, the ministry at the same time, we have entered into family planning and yes. uh, have actively started uh, the process of making <laughs> babies. Amen. <laughs> and uh, what most people don't know is that um, Ashley received a pregnancy test that she was pregnant uh, in November of last year. Mm -hmm. And uh, right before Christmas, we experienced uh, miscarriage. And uh, so definitely didn't see that coming. And then uh, she was, uh, had another positive had another, pregnancy yeah, test. Yeah, the in, joy of pregnancy again. In March. And again, uh -huh. didn't see that coming. <laughs> didn't see, yeah, true. Uh, so that's the good. And um, right after um, Easter of this year, uh, we experienced another miscarriage. And so that second one really rocked us to our core. Um, and yeah. I knew that if we were going to be healthy, that we've got to take some time. And so thanks to the power of technology, thanks to amazing team, amazing covering and support, um, it afforded us the opportunity to record a lot of things ahead of time. Yeah. And take uh, a take, break take and kind of get refreshed, you know, mm -hmm. um, in the month of May, we had a lot of people come out and speak and Vince and I got poured back into, which was awesome. Uh, and that's the, that's the beauty of our church yes. is that we can take moments when we need them because life is going to happen to yes, us all. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to experience things uh, that are sometimes going to rock us to our core. Mm -hmm. But to have a community that's not solely dependent on one person, but we're all dependent on God and right. being able to sit down, being able to for us kind of get away and, mm -hmm. and hold hands together and cry yeah, together see God and, and yeah receive healing and I think about 11 days in in the month of May when we took off we both kind of looked at each other and said okay we're back yeah we're ready uh -huh. <laughs> and the joy of that was we then took the rest of the month to just kind of relax and it took us from the place of uh, complete devastation to okay now we can breathe but then it mm -hmm. brought us to a new place of overflow um, and from that season, so we took all of May off, and in the month of June, that's when we oh, were man. blessed yeah. with a brand new facility. So God was just showing us that he is going to carry us. Mm -hmm. He is going to carry you, yeah. um, and he is going to exceed abundantly above all that you could ask or think if you will just trust him with your life and the things that you don't understand. But one thing about life is that as great as things are in certain areas, there are going to be other areas of your life that are still going to require faith. And so <laughs> faith and growth. And, and yes. I mean, they're going to require us to, to spend time in prayer. That's and, right. I mean, and, and so through all of that, the enemy will try to bombard oh, you. Absolutely. He's the accuser of the brethren is what the Bible calls him. So in every in every step you take, right? 
Um, he's going to throw those darts of what if in your in your mind. He's going to throw, oh, you're not enough or or you're not doing enough or, you know, just just the thoughts or, of negativity. Or what I said or what God said will not come will to not pass. Come to pa right. He'll make you start to doubt or start to get an unbelief about things that God has promised you. Yeah. But if you go with us to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 9 through 12, this is going to be our verse for the month. So I want you all to begin, as we talked about before, we're going to commit scriptures to memory. We're going to commit scriptures to heart because when life presses you, what's in you is going to come out. And life is, again, going to press us all. Yes. So we need to have the word of God oozing out of us. We need to have the word of God uh, when we get hit. That's the first thing that comes to our heart, even when we don't feel like we want to quote a Bible verse, and we want to Amen. say something. Yeah. It's, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Yes. And so 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 through 12, verse 9 says, this is what the scriptures mean when they say, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And we know in 1 John, we love him because he first yes. loves us. It says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. So our natural mind can't see our natural eye or our natural, what is it? Natural eye can't see, our natural ear can't, can't hear, hear our it. natural mind can't even dream it. No. But God's spirit wants mm -hmm. to reveal to us the things that we didn't see coming, whether they're good, whether they're bad, or yeah. whether they're the in-between. And it says, for his spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep, deep secrets. secrets. Amen. No one can know a person's thought except that uh, except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit. Yeah. We receive God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely Amen. Given, given us. Let's let's go before the Lord in prayer today. So, Heavenly Father, in this thank word, you. we thank you for uh, allowing us the privilege to be able to sit down with our church family, our community, uh, those who are watching. We're so grateful, Lord, for them in their lives. So as we delve into your word, we want to uh, bring out what your voice is saying to us. Help us to bring encouragement. Help us to strengthen those who may have questions, who may have doubts. But Lord, most importantly, help us to be a light so that your glory and your love can be seen. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so I, I, the, the text and this week, we really want to uh, deal with verse 9 about no eye has seen and no ear has heard mm -hmm. and no mind has imagined what God has prepared for those who love him. And what happens when things are going on in our life that in our eyes, we can't believe what we're seeing. In our mind, it's like, how did this take place? In our ear, we, you know, whether it's good or bad news, it's just something that we did not see coming. I want you to always understand that that is a form of disruption. And disruption breeds and triggers insecurity. And, and today I want us to talk about insecurity and lean in now. Uh, to be honest and really take a self-assessment that all of us, go ahead and, and, and type in. Mm -hmm. Me too. Me too. <laughs> uh, all of us deal with a level of insecurity from time to time. I don't yes. care how spiritual you are. And, 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 and if you say that you don't, that is a form of insecurity. Mm -hmm. But disruptions trigger insecurity. So when you're having a hard time making sense of your life, uh, you then have to deal with the feelings that come as a result. And uh, insecurity is, uh, how is that defined? Oh, man. I, well, I love what Oxford, it was at Oxford American Dictionary. And they have, they gave us three definitions here. I'm going to read them off. The first one is not firmly fixed. So you're insecure when you're not firmly assured or fixed. Uh, the second, def the second uh, definition they gave us, lacking confidence or assurance. And the third one is uncertainty or anxiousness. So when, when life takes place and things that you didn't imagine happen, these are the immediate feelings that, that come up. Like, I don't know if I'm as secure as I thought I was. No, and that's true. A lot of times we don't see insecurity coming, right? It is just triggered. So when something happens, a life event happens to you, you find yourself um, maybe in a situation that you don't, always, don't necessarily feel qualified for, right? That it comes immediately when you're faced by whatever the obstacle is. And so you really don't see it coming, but I'm so glad that God's given us a word. And so we are going to give you the answer to today's message. So, you know, I didn't see it coming, the good, the bad, the in-between. Um, the answer to 
when insecurity is triggered is found in verse 10 where it says, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his spirit. Mm -hmm. So we might not understand naturally, but if we sit with what's going on, the good, the bad, the in between long enough, then Holy Spirit is going to give you insight into what's happening so that insecurity doesn't form your personality. Hear me on that. Insecurity will rise, but we have to make the decision to not allow the insecurity to then inform our actions. Uh, one thing that I encourage everyone to do is to go through the word of God every year from cover to cover. Listen, just just read it. There's a blessing for reading the word of God. And I'm, I'm telling you right now, y'all get six months to prepare. Going into January, I am going to ask you all to read the Bible with me. And you might not be able to finish it. You might finish it two, three years, but we're going to start reading this word together. But as I was reading the word of God, one thing I couldn't help but notice was how many instances of insecurity shaped trajectories of people's lives. Oh, absolutely. I think it's found all throughout the word of God. I mean, starting with Abraham, mm. <laughs> all the way, well, Adam and Eve, definitely. Um, oh, man, you, you can just find it all throughout the Old and New Testament. <laughs> but there, there are a couple ways that through looking at that, I saw how insecurity takes root. Oh, absolutely. And so uh, Jonathan, who was the son of Saul, David, King David's best friend, had a son that the Bible often refers to him as Mephibosheth. Yeah. But Mephibosheth, his name was actually given to him when he was born, was Mary Ball. And so he changed his name to Mephibosheth mm -hmm. because life took place and he allowed the event of life to label him and he began to be identified by something that was out of his control. Hear me when I yeah. say that. We cannot allow insecurities to label us, especially when they were based on events that were outside of our control. So to not have you read the entire story of Mephibosheth, when he was a child and his father's house was under attack, the one who was in charge to protect him carried him away, but dropped him, crushing his feet and causing an able body to then be handicapped. And so instead of saying that that was an event that happened, he then anchored his whole identity into something that caused him to lift from a place of insecurity. So insecurity takes root based off of life situations. Where, where you literally shape your life around what happened to you. I think that's so many people though. Mm, they okay. let their past, I think I did a little video about this, but they let their past define and confine them. Where whatever event happened to me, that's now who I am. No, that's not who you are. And so many people have been victims of their past as well. Listen, there are some things we could control, right? Yeah. Other things we can't. Yeah. We couldn't control how we were born, what, what, we were, what family we were born into, where we were born. We can't control certain things in our life, but God's goodness overrides everything that wasn't right in our life, and he can make it all back up. And this is, what I this, love. Is, this is real for us, though. Oh, it is. Because, you know, as we were going to the doctor post these, you know, miscarriages, your, yeah. your question is, what did we do wrong? Right. What Why is this happening? What you didn't know? we do right? And all the doctors are like, you both are healthy. We mm -hmm. don't. We don't know. And so, you know, just as a husband, you know, yeah. the thought comes, you know, sometimes, you know, especially during Mother's Day, Father's Day, people ask you all kind of crazy questions. Um, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and, um, you know, my wife as a woman, that's that's something that weighs on her. Absolutely. And so one thing we had to do for each other was say, hey, this event does, does not, not define, define who you are. No. This this thing does. Or what we can do mm -hmm. or, or what we can have or who we could be. It doesn't define anything. And so instead of changing our identity to what took place, yeah. we're going to just then. And so we made a decision to become content yeah. in this season, in this journey. And. God has blessed us with beautiful Godchildren and uh, the, the children and the youth of our community mm -hmm. and those in which we impact. And so as we are walking through this journey yes. of bringing a biological seed into the earth, we're enjoying the opportunity to love, to love on, on the other, a child. Others. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And it's give, it gave us just such a level of content. Uh, the next way that insecurity takes root, I found this looking at John the Baptist. <laughs> And so John the Baptist was related to Jesus and they were cousins. And so John the Baptist was a tad bit older and started his ministry a tad bit sooner mm -hmm. than, than Jesus. But Jesus, when he started, he took off mm -hmm. and um, people were beginning to come to John the Baptist, comparing him to Christ. And unfortunately, 
John the Baptist allowed the comparison to then uh, cause insecurity to take root in his life. And so we've got life that causes insecurity to yes. take root, and then we have comparison. comparison. And I want to talk to someone right now. Listen, stop measuring your life That's by right. looking at what someone else is doing and what someone else has. Someone else has. Yes. God has a plan for your life. Mm -hmm. God has a set time for your life. God is going to reveal to you by His Spirit what you're to do. And so, right. as you're looking over the fence at someone else, I love uh, Joe Vivian, who is oh, I love. <laughs> One of our overseers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, she always says, don't look over the fence. Don't nope. look over the fence. The grass always looks greener, doesn't it? Because mm -hmm. you don't know what they had to do to till that grass. All we see is the fruit of that grass. And we just think, oh, they got that instantly. And I think that's what Instagram kind of does. <laughs> Instant. <laughs> Everything looks like it just happened. Yeah. <laughs> but, but really, we don't know what their journey was as they don't know what yours is. That's right. And you've got to trust your process, the process that God has put in front of you. And in due time, he will exalt you and it will be better than what you saw others around you having or doing or whatever. When you fall in love with your process, comparison no longer becomes a temptation. That's right. Because you're falling in love with just the day in and day out um, practices and day in and day out opportunities that God wants to lay before you. And so it's important for us to understand that there's a plan that God wants to reveal uh, because it says that he's prepared a plan for those who love him. So we have to trust first God's love for us. And that sometimes is hard to <laughs> accept, especially when we feel. Uh, or experiencing, mm -hmm. we're going through something. But, you know, um, I've learned about the barriers that we face. And we have a couple of barriers here. And I want to bring these up. If you're right, if you're taking notes, write this down. Um, so here are some barriers which we could face. One is distraction. We can face a barrier of distraction. Let's just say you're going about your thing, you're in your career, you're having a little bit of success, but then, you know, something tends to happen in your personal life, maybe, that's caused you to, to, to not focus like you should be focusing on what you're called to do, right? The second barrier is persecution. Oh, man, the opposition that will come at you for doing what God's called you to do is going to be great. In fact, if it was easy, I, I would dare say it wasn't God calling you to it. There is going to be, when God calls you to something, there is a divine opposition that's going to come your way. But rejoice. We are to rejoice in persecution. That third barrier is disappointment, right? We're doing something. We think, oh, man, it's going to work. You know, <laughs> like we've put our all into it. And then we come up short. It wasn't what we expected it wasn't what we thought it was going to be i want to add a fourth one yes discouragement before some of the biggest blessings mm -hmm. of our life mm -hmm. i've experienced the greatest level of discouragement where in your heart you know that you're doing what god has asked you to do but there is nothing naturally telling you that it's right um, but I love how you have flipped the barriers. Yes. Well. So, you know, when I thought about these and the Lord was talking to me about these barriers that we all face in whatever season we're in, we tend to think they're negative. We tend yeah. to think, oh, this is horrible. This is an obstacle. What is this? But I want to, I want to tell you that barriers can work as builders. Come on. Say that You're again. Yeah. Say that and type that in the <laughs> comment section. Say yeah. it again and type it again. Your barriers can work as builders. Your barriers can work yeah, as builders. Yet sometimes God puts these mm. things in our way, not to take us down, not because he doesn't love us, not because, you know, he's not for us, but they're they're help they're there to help build our faith. You know, they're there to help build our character. They're there so we to help build that Lord, we know you're for us. And in and, and whatever situation you face, whatever valley season you find yourselves in, and those barriers are gonna come, they do come, you will know that when you go to your next season, whatever it took for you come to on. maintain your faith in that valley season, come when on. you get to that mountaintop, it's come gonna on. be so great. And you're gonna use those same lessons and one thing the Lord was just talking to me about was our faith you know our faith isn't revealed or developed on the mountaintop it's developed and revealed in the valley seasons in those seasons of your life so while you do have the victory yes you do there are going to be times where it doesn't feel like you do but you keep pushing you keep going you keep focused and you will see that the Lord will exalt you and it will be so much greater 
what you could have ever thought or did on your own. I love that barriers are builders. Absolutely. And, and I, I'd like to package this in. These are what I call the symptoms of a breakthrough. Like what, how do I know a breakthrough is on the verge of happening? Well, I'm going to have a, a host of distractions that are going to show up. Absolutely. As we were preparing to uh, get back into in-person service while we were waiting, the biggest barrier was that we didn't have uh, the go ahead necessary to be inside of where we had previously worshiped. Uh, worshiped. Yeah. And yeah. so that was a divine barrier. And so in the midst of that barrier, there were then distracting forces that came up. I thought maybe we were supposed to leave the area that we're in because the doors <laughs> were closed. Which was a distraction. And so there yeah. were properties that were coming up all over this metro Atlanta area. And, yeah. and you know, we had the ability to perform and to be able to acquire a host of things. But there was this uh, knowing or this peace that I had in my spirit of hold steady. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then the persecution arose. Oh, arose. And yeah, so we'll out talk, of nowhere. We'll talk next week about uh, part two, which is entitled, and I took that personal. Yeah. Um, persecution began to come up. And so the darts and the, the attacks on character, those began to, to mm -hmm. increase. And then disappointment, uh, as well as discouragement set in because I was looking at my church wanting to be back, but just because of the vicissitudes of life, uh, because there's a special something that happens when, whether you're virtual or whether you're in the midst, um, there's something that happens when we come together that strengthens oh, us. Yeah. But I, I'm just watching uh, my congregation just kind of float on and float into different tests and trials and not have that safety and support. And as a pastor, I was feeling like I'm failing uh, as a leader. And it was in that moment where God just continued to say, just pick yourself up. And yes. did you do what I asked you to do? Did you do what I've called you this to do? This is where your great faith kicks in because in, in the enemy is so, uh, he's just so sly, y'all. You know, when you are in your valley season, that's where he comes and he yeah. comes with the thoughts. That's when the, 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 the seeds of negativity, the seeds of doubt start flooding your mind. And that is when we need to literally um, lean in, as Vince always says, lean into the spirit. Actually, Pastor Andrew Moment said it. I stole it. Well, That's amen. the only time Thank I'm you. giving you credit. <laughs> the only time I'm giving you credit. <laughs> yeah, lean in. Thank you, Pastor Moment. Lean in, right, into what the Holy Spirit is doing. And I love what Ephesians 3, um, and then we can go to 16. Yeah, Ephesians 3 and 16. Yeah, it says, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. And that's what we're going to need to, to push through those valleys is, is inner strength mm -hmm. from the spirit. And it's, this is not going to be anything that um, was going to happen mm -hmm. naturally. But this is going to be all through the spirit. It says, and then in verse 17, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Look at what happens. As you trust, your roots will grow down into God's love. And when, it, when your roots start to grow down, it's going to keep you strong through whatever the season is going to keep you strong and it says and in verse 18 and you may have the power to understand as all god's people should how wide how long oh, how, how high God. and how deep his love is when distractions come you know the enemy's biggest tactic is to make you think god doesn't love you that's his that's only he, that's his only tactic. that's all he wants to do that's his only if you can take away his only punch yeah you can weather any storm. That's right. And going deeper in God's love will give you that strength. It will give you the strength needed to keep going. When all hell breaks loose, when adversity is in your life, it's that inner peace, that inner strength that will keep you. Man, so let's come together and pray right now. We want to pray for you. I mean, what I love about the power of technology is that while we're gathering right now online, and uh, some of you may be traveling today, uh, wherever you are in the world, you're joining right now with a body of uh, our community that's gathering in person at King Middle School for you yeah, believe, yeah. the final Sunday. I know. Outdoors that's for crazy. our, our, our Sunday so fun day. And uh, we're going to all come together right yeah. now in the form in prayer. I really sense that we just need to pray to encourage your heart. If you can weather the storms of distraction, of persecution, of disappointment and discouragement, uh, you will then on the other side of that see the very thing in which you didn't even know you were praying in the spirit about. And yeah. so join us today 
in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We praise you. We love you, Lord. You are so awesome. As we kicked off this series of I didn't see that coming, when life throws curveballs, whether good, whether bad, or in between, we're going to trust in your spirit right now for those who are listening, for those who are watching. They may be having questions, maybe not understanding where they are. God, you're going to be with them to remind them of your love, to allow their roots to go deep into the rich soil in which you planted them in by your grace. Lord, as we are going and doing what you've called us to do, help us to see your light. Help us to see your plan in all your ways, Father. We pray for every person who may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ right now. As they're making a decision, as it says in Romans 10, 13, to call upon the name of the Lord and they shall be saved. Right now, as they're there, they're saying, Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, I want to return. Jesus, I want to grow in my relationship with you. You've heard all of those prayers. We've answered and you've answered them in Jesus name. Amen. And so if you prayed with us at all, uh, there's a number coming up on screen, 770-667-4899, where you can uh, let us know and just say, hey, I prayed with you. Uh, My wife and I, our team would love to follow up with you to ensure that we're walking alongside you as you're taking this journey of life. Well, today is 4th of July. And so happy 4th. I know (laughs) Happy (laughs) uh, in this season, it's it's a tad bit controversial, but here's, here's the truth. Uh, There is no true freedom without Christ. And so as we're reminded of freedoms, uh, as we're reminded of still work that needs to be done, Mm -hmm. may we rest in who Jesus Christ is. Yes. Um, If you desire to partner with the Outlet community, uh, right now is our time where we receive today's offering. Uh, Just some things that are going on inside of our community as we're raising today's offering. Uh, We have started now our drive for back to school. So God has Uh, caused us to now be in a brand new facility in the Grant Park area. We're in a partnership with Upstairs Atlanta and beginning in-person services on Sunday, August 1st. But what that does is it allows us to expand our reach into the community and reach more students Mm -hmm. and more families uh, for the kingdom of God and work with other organizations and work with other churches as well to do just that. And uh, if you desire to be a part of today's offering, Uh, You can help us to get ready for the uh, uh, opening. We're going to have to uh, buy new banners, signs, (laughs) uh, equipment, um, you know, just you name it. I mean, we've really taken it up a notch. Uh, But as well, this month, we're still going to be committed to blessing hundreds of families with school supplies so they get a great start back into the school year. And so uh, with everything that's going on, I can't thank you all enough for Mm -hmm. your faithfulness. It's because of you that we're able to do what we're doing today. And uh, if you desire to give, there are three ways to give. You can give at theoutletcommunity.com slash give. And then the page will open up and uh, you'll get some information about our accountability, our checks and balances. You know, just so you can see that uh, we're very transparent with about our resources. Uh, You can also give by text. Texting the number 73256 and the letters T-O-C and a link will be sent back to you. And we also have Zelle set up for those who are more comfortable using Zelle. And our email address that's connected to Zelle is give at the outlet community dot com. Um, We want to invite you back next Sunday, as my wife and I have said, this month is going to be unique. Anything else you want to say to No, I'm just glad to be with you all this Sunday. I pray you have a wonderful rest of your day. Do brunch, do, do barbecue, whatever you do. Love you guys. We'll see you soon.